Kia ora guys and welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name's Max and a massive thank you to my patrons for all the support you've been giving me. Wow. I genuinely believe I've started to get bruises all over my body after watching South Africa versus France. A very intense, just gut-wrenching match to watch. You found it very hard to just not be on the edge of your seat the whole time, even when watching highlights, even when watching replays of the match that I used to make this video. It was one of the greatest games that I've ever seen. It was decided by one point. Not to the team that I thought they would win though, because France and South Africa, they really did handle the pressure very differently from one another. Pressure in the knockout games is absolutely unbelievably difficult to avoid, and the team who avoided it best was the team that came out on top. No surprises over there. For today, we're going to discover how South Africa kind of um, dealt with that pressure in comparison to France to show how South Africa absolutely deservingly just took that win. Let's get into this. With the asset of hindsight, you can see why France were going to lose with just the first breakdown. We can see Etzebeth, Mostert, Khaleesi and Kitsoff all packed in to charge down Dupont's right foot, while Vermeulen is desperately calling for reinforcements. As we now find ourselves in the wide shot, Vermeulen is unbelievably desperate because France have a massive overlap. There are three Frenchmen in a hands down the line, going from Flamont to Ramos, while Dante is wrapping arounds to join this line. With Peno also out of frame, there's an excellent opportunity opportunity for France to counterattack because Colby is out of frame for South Africa, Dante's wraparound will be able to create a 2 on one if France commit to the space straight away. Dupont who we can see approaching the ruck on 12 seconds into the test however, takes just a single glance towards the outside, not enough time to notice the opportunity. France however, they have possibly given England the information they need to take down South Africa. I don't think England will be able to beat South Africa, but what we see here is very reminiscent of what Jason Ryan has done with the All Blacks Mall. On 256 while Wokey is mid-air, France have 9 players in the line at as we saw on the previous shot. So that Wokey isn't as obvious of a jumper, Olivon is helping Aldrit with the lift. 3 of France's 4 heaviest players are now getting into the formation of a front row in a scrum. Before Wokey has landed, Antonio is binding to Aldrit so that this front row replica can straighten before South Africa join the mall. Bai and Dante are also available to join the sides as if they're flankers, while although the front 3 are obviously doing the lift, Malvaka can wrap around and bind into the role of a number 8. Just 3 seconds later, Malvaka has bounced to the mall while Bayer's on his inside to block Vermeulen from disrupting the ball from an offside position. The dominance of France's gravitational pull now has 6 Springboks fall off, while Antonio remains in front to fend defenders. South Africa are penalised for trying to take them all down from offside before France's selection of a centre on the wing becomes their benefit again. Peno comes into play to fix Mbanambi in a 2 on 1 before he sends Bayer over for the try unmarked. Unfortunately though guys for France we do get a lot of evidence that South Africa seem to be operating as a bit of a hive mind while France just aren't all 100% in sync. Mostert comes in to help do toy tackle Aldrich on 724 while he's isolated. Because Malvaka is on the outside not binding to Aldrit, France have gained fewer meters with the spring box bringing the man down. Jelonch is doing the same thing as Malvaka but now takes the ball off Aldrit while he loses meters. As we pause during Jelonch's attempts to charge forward we can see that this attempt to gain meters is kind of just like a chicken supporting KFC. Wolke and Dante are the only players in a realistic position to clean a ruck around Jelonch because Bay and Flamont are over to the open side while Figu is heading back on side. If Jelonch runs between the shoulders of Malherbe and Vermeulen, he's stuffed. That's a turnover all day. He's barely off the ground and lacks balance when he advances forward while Vermeulen tackles him with a position that means he barely needs to move to win the turnover. We see Vermeulen's hands on the ball on 728 with Malvaka too high up to clean out. Just a few frames later, Malherbe binds to Vermeulen and gives him his weight so that the ruck doesn't collapse. On the wide shot, we can now see 14 French players in the same line of defence. That means Ramos has to mark the entire backfield all on his own. Because Reinhardt kicks the ball to a position between Ramos and the main line, as this animation of a fake ball shows us, we now arrive at 740 where there are no French players to tackle Etzebeth if the team loses this ball. Even worse, is that the ball lands on the red cross. 
because of Ramos being forced to defend the entire backfield on his own, he's now having to run all the way from here to here just to even get close to Aranza, who is my best friend and also goes over to score the try. There's no expansive rugby here, guys. There's just um, well-oiled units pulling off basic rugby strategy to just punish your launch's arrogance for going to get those extra meters all isolated, all on his own. I really don't like to pick on individual players just for the sake of their mental health, but when you make decisions that stupid against a team like South Africa who are very, very cohesive, you're going to get punished really badly, especially when you make such basic mistakes like that during knockout rugby. Um, you've really got to question what's going on if Gelange is making a move such as this one that's so high risk, so high reward. As I predicted before the game though, the defensive cohesion of France's backline absolutely improved. South Africa over here have done really well to get the ball out wide quickly with Leboc ready to unleash all three of the team's quickest players. Creel is in position to run a nice decoy line at Dante as we see on 1706, which will allow Colby to wrap around and pass either the short ball to Willemse or the wide ball to Colby. The French defence though know exactly what's up. They're very blatantly shifting to the open side alongside South Africa. Bielbiari also defends absolutely excellently to shift from his spot on the wing over to the cross so that Ramos can have the liberty of leaving the backfields to mark Colby on the wing. When Aronza gets to the halfway line in a position to pass from, he's now unable to get the ball out wide. Peno isn't just going to miss this tackle on Willemse, while Ramos has now put down his dish of frock legs to leave the restaurant and mark Colby. Libok, who coped really well under pressure this time however, spots a hole behind the French defence line on the next phase. Because Ramos is still leaving the breakdown alongside Jalabir, with Peno having made a tackle and Bielbiari behind them out of frame, there's no reasonable French player to defuse a kick. Because Dupont was on the wing, Woki is now the player who has to defuse the high ball and he simply put, messes it up. Damien Diolendi runs about 30 metres thanks to Woki failing to catch the ball. Before we arrive on 1732, the moment Jelon should have been subbed off. Woki, Aldred and Ramos have recovered to be ready for the next attack, while well, Bai is about there too. Having just made the tackle on Diolendi however, Jelon looks panicked. Despite those other defenders in Dupont guarding the fringe of the ruck against Reinach, he has no inclination to remain in place. Because he attempts to replace Dupont as a fringe guard, he's now moving side on when Reinach picks up the ball. Now forced to turn around and tackle Diolendi again, he's just got a single shoulder to do the job. Because he panicked, failing to remain calm like the rest of the team, Diolendi now has the gravitational advantage to run through the hole and get the try. South Africa are a very, very cheeky team. They're very good at blending the rules with um, the things that aren't in the rules. They were um, offside occasionally, but they would only do stuff like this when the referee wasn't watching. It's been very interesting to see Razzy Erasmus give all these lights from the coach's box to the players as well. And South Africa have been very similar with hands on the ground as well when it comes to this. Whenever Ben O'Keefe was looking at what they were doing the breakdown, they were very good at winning the turnovers very, very cleanly, nothing wrong with it. They were very, very smart with um, how the referee was going though, when they saw that Ben O'Keefe was watching the defense line, checking for players who were offside, then they were kind of putting their hand on the ground to give themselves a hand that was very, very well done. Unfortunately for the box though, Ben O'Keefe is the best ref in the Southern Hemisphere and he doesn't put up with attempts to bend the laws when he sees them. Kitsoff is very clearly trying to win the turnover from offside. Embanabi hand also hits the ground while he tries to win, resulting in a penalty. Dupont catches South Africa napping and exposes their blindside defence again by sucking Khaleesi in so that he can put Colby into two minds. While Malvaka is the obvious candidate to take the pass, Colby also has to watch Wolke, which allows for Malvaka to get the try. It was very high risk, high reward stuff from South Africa. They paid for it big time when they were caught, but when they uh, didn't get caught, they were very, very successful. So definitely hats off to them for trying to be a bit cheeky over there with the rules. Anyway, you guys remember how Eben Beth he got not he didn't get nominated, sorry, for World Rugby Player of the Year last year. He kind of got robbed from a nomination, right? Well, once again, there is literally no structure to a try by South Africa. You can falsely claim this is expansive rugby again, but this here is simply the best lock in the world, showing why this time he deserves that nomination for World Player of the Year. The shape France have taken here isn't one I've seen before, so I'm not entirely sure what's up. If I had to guess what's going on, I would suspect that Bai has been fixed in position so we can pass out the back to Ramos, because Creel is literally marking nobody. A cross kick from Ramos to Peno would give him all the time in the world to score a try, since Colby and Willemse are so far back. Itzabeth, however, reads this all in seconds 
as he sprints forward to put pressure on Dupont. Dupont makes a bad pass because of the pressure and we can now see the ball coming off by his foot. Dialendi then manages to pick the ball up, getting the ball wide to Dutoy, who then unleashes Creel. On 25-30, Ramos, Peno, and Biel Biari are all still working their way back. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what Creel needs to do. A somewhat decent kick to Colby will always become a try in this situation. As you guys can see from this video so far, South Africa versus France was an absolutely massive match. It was unbelievably intense to watch. I've just got so much to say about this test match. But as you guys can see, I think this is one of these videos that requires two parts for it to get done. I'm going to end today's video over here so I can release a part two in a couple days time after this one and really just flesh out everything fully because there is so much stuff for us to cover about the Springboks victory over France. Congratulations to them for a win and I will see you guys in the audience for part two of this video. Just remember to like this video, subscribe to me and share your thoughts down below if you enjoyed the video. You can also support me on a fair few other platforms such as Instagram and of course I'm um, over on my Patreon. Thank you so much to you guys for your support. I will see you guys in the next video and South Africa man, good luck for England's this week. It's going to be a bit of a clash so I'll see you guys for that one. Cheers for watching from Max.